Good evening. Welcome to the Hart Cluett Museum's uh, celebration of making history, a virtual fundraising event. My name is Mark Shipley. I'm the president of the Board of Trustees. And uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank our sponsors this evening who helped make this, this uh, event possible. Uh, that includes Berkshire Bank, Boucher Financial Group, Capital Region Living Magazine, the wonderful Chet and Karen Alpauka, Khalil Jamison Group, Architecture Plus, Cannon, Hyman & Weiss, Colony Mechanical Contractors, Buy 18 Craft Brewing, All-Star Wine & Spirits, Mash of, Massive Mesh, uh, McLaren Engineering, Lori Schindler Team at Howard Hanna, Sage College, and Rare Form. Um, as we get started tonight, the first thing that we're going to uh, share with you is uh, a little video uh, from an interview with Sam Mahosky, who is our curatorial assistant, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what she likes here at the Hart Kluwet Museum. I remember I was walking through the house with Jane Kluwet Hansen, and she is a descendant of the Kluwet family, and she was just talking about how she remembers the space and how she was a little kid and telling me about how she wouldn't like to go in the basement because it was dark and scary. That happens a lot when people come in just to share their experiences of the space, of the museum, or just interacting with the staff. I don't think a lot of people understand that we are building community all the time, whether you're coming in the door as a returning volunteer or someone who's just stepping into the space for the first time. I think the coolest thing the Heart Kluwet Museum is just that we serve the community and we're in the hub of Troy and Rensselaer County, I think, just to be able to preserve our collective past and provide a bridge to that connectivity is really a special privilege to be a part of. It brings us together, that sharedness, and to be able to, to connect with one another is so important. And I think that's so special that we can look back and say, oh, we see ourselves in this. It strengthens our community, and it's something that, you know, not every institution gets to say that it does. An object that I really do enjoy, um, the elevator <laughs> uh, next door in the, the Hart Kluwet house. I, it's, you don't think that an elevator would exist in an 1827 structure, but there it is, just hidden in plain sight. And it's so funky and cool, but it just tells that story of the continuity of history and how spaces just grow with the people that live in them. And I think, ooh, that's so cool. <laughs> Hello, my name is Phyllis Conroy. I am a board member at the Hart Kluwet Museum and I've served many roles for the past seven years. Uh, the one I'm coming to talk to you tonight about is my role as chair of the silent auction for this year's gala. Um, there is a link to a program called Silent Auction Pro. Last year we were a virtual uh, gala this year we're virtual and in person so we're using the same program and it works really well you'll find the link in the chat space of this call so please click on the link if you've already enrolled or if you've already signed up it'll bring you to a point where you can view the catalog and you can bid if you haven't signed up it'll ask you to sign up enter credit card and uh, other information. So please, we've got lots of wonderful things um, in the silent auction this year. We have a five-day trip to Cabo San Lucas. We've got a beautiful Lentantillo picture. We've um, got uh, other paintings and jewelry boxes, all kinds of things that would fit everybody. So log in and bid and bid. One of the other things, we were originally scheduled to end our auction at 9 o'clock this evening. In order to make sure everyone has enough time to, to bid and to get in and take a look at it, we've extended that until tomorrow, October 1st at noontime. So you've got a little bit extra time. Please use it. Log in, create an account, and bid. Okay, um, at this time I'd like to introduce Brendan Kennedy. Uh, he has a documentary uh, about history. What I find fascinating about Rensselaer County's history is just how it's always been sort of a hub of innovation and has continued to be 
a hub of innovation. You know, from back when it was, you know, collars and cast iron stoves and railroad ties and being, you know, the fourth wealthiest city in the country to then what it is today, which is one of the most well-preserved sort of uh, Victorian neighborhoods in, in the country, if not the world. What Troy offers and what, and what this place offers is just sort of, you know, puts that in context. It allows you to really appreciate the beautiful architecture and the walkable streets and the, just the atmosphere that you feel like you're actually living history just being here in the present and being able to have this place to refer to is something that I really sort of fell in love with. When I moved up here from New York City many years ago, I wasn't planning on moving to Troy and my, my wife and I were driving around and um, we're just stunned by just what a well-preserved place uh, downtown Troy is and and the history of it all uh, so I would say you know history is a key thing that people value in Troy and, and in Rensselaer County look look at HBO I mean HBO came here because they saw this incredible sort of well-preserved place where they could recreate 1890s 1880s New York City they had a thing uh, a couple weeks ago where you know talking about why they chose Troy um, and the idea that they can shoot one angle and it's historic and then shoot another angle and it's still historic and then yet another, whereas in New York City or some other historic place where they might be trying to film a period film or TV show, it's like, yeah, you can shoot this way, but then if you shoot that way, there's a building built two years ago or, or something that's an, an anachronism that uh, Troy, you know, if you're, if you're in the right place, uh, it's just so well preserved. It's just a really special place. Hi, my name is Starlin D'Angelo, and I have the great privilege of being the new executive director here at the Hart Cluett Museum. Um, this is a wonderful institution. It's such an important part of uh, Rensselaer County and uh, the city of Troy. And um, we have a long tradition of honoring individuals and entities that have made a particularly um, important contribution to our community. So this year, we are honoring two um, well-deserving honorees, the first of which is the Rosenblum Companies. Um, they are being honored for their contributions to the preservation of historic buildings in downtown Troy and for their continued investment in the community, um, especially the recent um, work that they've done in adaptive reuse of buildings and new construction that was very sympathetic to the historic landscape in downtown Troy. So I'd like to introduce Jeff Merrill from Rosenblum Companies. Rosenblum Development Corporation is uh, one of the largest fully integrated uh, commercial real estate development, management, and now construction companies uh, in the capital region. One crucial partner to us in Troy has been uh, the Hart Cluett Museum. Um, you know, the staff here is so knowledgeable and so willing to sort of take that journey with us where we're trying to divine, you know, how do we respect and not just respect in sort of a black and white you know photo on the wall remembrance you know which but but really how do we celebrate in our projects you know that greater history and culture and um, this this place has been such a resource in going back and helping us to understand uh, you know what came before why things are the way they are and and it, it sharpens our lens for looking into the future. And our second honoree is the Troy Waterfront Farmer's Market. Everybody loves the Farmer's Market. Um, we are honoring them for the economic vitality to the, that they bring to Rensselaer County, for helping to feed us during the pandemic, and for con contributing uh, to improving food security for everyone in our community. So I'd like to welcome uh, Zach Metzger from the Troy Waterfront Farmer's Market. The farmer's market was started in Troy, I think is an effort to address maybe some of the food inequity in the area. Of course, 20 years ago, Troy was a bit more depressed in the downtown area, and there was a big effort to connect farms and food to people 
With so much history in a city like this, you need somewhere to embody that. You know, we have the buildings, you have the, the wonderful statues that we have around town and the monuments, um, but you need somewhere to explain that. You need somewhere that is people to talk about the history of it. And I, I think Hart Kluet really ties that together and brings the community back to that information and that knowledge. Um, Hart Kluet's not just a museum, a physical place, it's also people. Uh, people that know a lot, people that understand the history of this community. And so they're excited and, and capable of sharing that history with everybody, uh, with the people who come to the market, with people who pass through the street, um, with uh, anybody in the community. I think that's a really amazing thing. So now I'd like to introduce our uh, next uh, uh, program. Um, we are talking about the restoration of 51 windows in the Hart Cluett House. Um, if you haven't been to the Hart Cluett House before, um, you probably have seen it. Um, it is one of the most significant buildings in Troy, and it's also nationally significant for its architecture. We've received a um, New York State grant through the REDC of $385,000. And we need to raise just $25,000 to restore those windows. Now, anybody who's ever worked in old buildings knows that the windows and the roofs and foundations, all of the parts that make the exterior envelope of a building are really critically important for preserving that building. So it's essential that we get this work done. And I think you can see on screen now um, some examples of why we desperately need to restore all 51 of these windows. And if you can imagine, 51 windows, that's a lot of work that needs to be done. It's very carefully done, very meticulous work. So we need your help to make that happen. Um, there is a link um, in the chat, uh, and also if you're using Silent Auction Pro, um, you can go to the Fund a Need tab on that website and click on that if you'd like to make a donation through that platform. Um, and um, we're going to have our curator, Stacy Draper, talk to you about the Hart Cluett House and the importance of the windows. We are looking at today the window project that is part of a major uh, effort to preserve this building over time. The windows, of course, are really a critical element in the building envelope, which is uh, the sort of exterior of the building, including the roof and foundation, but the windows are really critical in keeping out the, the weather and they have had some restoration in places. For instance, the facade here, when we cleaned the stone back in 2005, the windows were also restored on the front, but that was a while ago now and any kind of wood, of course, is subject to the weather and uh, time. And so these windows, while they look okay, uh, they are the best in the building. We have over 51 windows to take care of. As you look at the house, the public sees the front primarily, but also we'll go inside in a minute and take a look at the way they are from the inside. They are very much a part of the, the house's um, interior and, and an important uh, survival in many ways. They've not been changed over time. So we're standing in the connecting link between our museum building and the Hart Cluett House in another set of windows which are in good shape. But one of the things that we're very excited about uh, for this project is it will really add to the uh, impact that this museum can have as an economic driver in the community, as a National Register historic site. This is a really important uh, structure to maintain and preserve, and we look forward to being able to use it in new and exciting ways in the future uh, as programs evolve, as technology allows us to do things that we may not have been able to do before. And, and all of that builds on a long history and tradition uh, of this museum and this organization being an important part of the community. I want to introduce next um, Stephen Boucher, who's the president and CEO of the Boucher Group, and he's going to be assisting us with our fundraising effort. Thank you, Star, and thank you everybody for tuning in. I mean, we have dozens of you 
watching us live. How cool is that, that we can do all of this in this form and, and fashion? We had a little live event before this, and it went really great, and here we are doing it virtually. I mean, who would have ever thought? But I watched all those videos along with you, and they're pretty dynamic. But let me just start out with saying this great organization that's been around for how many years? I mean, how many years? 100 years almost, it's remarkable. But it wasn't that long ago that we almost lost this organization because we just needed so much support and we needed to really, you know, get back on track. And we've done that. And all of a sudden, now we're thriving, we're doing well, but we still need your help. And before I get started, I just want to thank all of the people that make this happen, Star and all of the leadership inside internally within the organization and then you know Mark Shipley and Phyllis and all of the people that volunteer their time this can't happen without all of their efforts so without any further ado we did a, a little kind of raise your hand in the previous live event and it went well and what we're asking you to do if you can find any way at all to help get this window project up and going. We need to raise $25,000. And if there's any way that you can help, we would really, truly appreciate it. So I'd like to just start out, and believe it or not, I've been doing radio 26 years, so I know there's people on the other side of this camera. So I can see you raise your hand. So if you can find it within yourself, I'd like to start off with a level of $2,000. And I'd like to start off by saying, you know, I'll start off the, the, the contributions with the $2,000 contribution. And if anybody could help in, help us with the $2,000 contribution, it would really, truly be appreciated. I know that, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not the same as being live, but your, your contributions will really be felt and needed. And as you can see from that, great video. These windows, I mean, they are the bones of the building, the roof, the foundation, and the windows. This is what really is going to be standing and allowing this great building to stand for a long time. So I'd like to maybe, for those of you that could possibly do $1,500, if you can raise your hand, it would truly be appreciated, anything that you can do. But if you can do $1,500, this is the time to try to you know, maybe help us out with a $1,500 contribution, it would truly be appreciated. As I stand here in this beautiful library and think of all the history of, of what this society stands for, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And I have a 162-year-old brownstone, 1819 Fifth Avenue. Jack Casey actually wrote a book on it, Senator Murphy, who had it built for he and his family, and then the Burns family took it over as a funeral, and then the O'Hare family, and we just redid our carriage house. And I can assure you, the windows are such an important part of this project. I've had three sleeps there. I've been waiting a year and a half. They told me in September I could sleep there. I thought it meant last September, but it was this September. You know how that goes. So I've had three sleeps there, and the windows are so important, so helping out the society with any contributions is good. I'd like to maybe move on to the $1,000 level. If anybody can possibly help us with a $1,000 contribution, it would really, truly be appreciated. Anything and everything that you can do goes a long, long way. Thank you. Now, maybe if I can ask if anybody can do a $500 contribution, raise your hands. I see you. It goes to a great cause, and believe me, it helps in a big way. And I'd like to finish out by, for those of you that can do a $250 contribution, every contribution matters. And for those of you that can do a $250 contribution, it would truly be appreciated. I can't thank you enough, each and every one of you, for taking part of this 
beautiful virtual event and also for doing your best to help raise some money for a well-needed cause. I thank you. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'm going to hand it off now to Mark Shipley. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much, Steve. And thank you, everybody out there, for your generosity. Uh, we're in the right now, we're going to be counting up the pledges so we can report back to you how well we did with the hands up. And while we're waiting for that, uh, here's a little video of Sam Hosky taking you behind the scenes at the Hart Cluett Museum. I always like to say hello to like the paintings or when I walk into the house, I like to say hello to the space just because I feel a little bit more connected to it. <laughs> this is where we bring our more fragile items. Um, so our textiles, our paintings, things that wouldn't uh, fare well in the humidity or in the extra cold. So the fact that we're able to control the temperature in here is really, really key in preserving those, those uh, objects, the history that goes with them. Troy was incorporated in 1791, so we do have a couple of pieces that go back that early. It really ranges, uh, in ter for time at least, here in the, in the storage, um, from more contemporary to, you know, earlier 19th century portraits, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of different types of history here presented in the storage racks. Sometimes you go in and you're just browsing and you're like, oh my god, I totally forgot that this, this lives here and, and you get to enjoy it all over again. Um, so that's my favorite part about storage is you get to just take it all in and notice all of the fun, cool things that, that you don't normally get to see on display. This is my favorite part of the collection is the textile parts and just the, it's just so fabulous to look at the, the clothes that people wore. You don't, because we all have clothes, we all wear them, and it's just you never think that, oh, someday these are going to be in the museum, maybe. This chair was recently brought in, dating back to the 1690s. It's probably now one of our earliest pieces that we have in the collection. We've kind of pulled back the upholstery a little bit, just so you can see the innards, um, and also in an attempt to try and not only date it, but also figure out where it was made, who made it, and the family that had this, how did they obtain it? So there's still a lot of research going on um, regarding this chair, trying to figure out all of those details and piece together that bigger story, which is always my favorite part of collection pieces, is trying to piece together that story. And this is definitely a unique piece that we're very happy to have in the collection. We saw a lot of these uh, while the Gilded Age was filming here, walking along the streets of Troy. Definitely for late uh, 19th century. Um, and based off of the inside, um, it was made in Troy or sold in Troy. They're certainly fun to look at and, and to see and to imagine people wearing these regularly. So something like this, in comparison to something like this, you're really able to understand just how times change and how our clothing reflects that, but also what goes into making clothes, what that process looks like, who's wearing those clothes. You're able to tell a story um, that's not only reflective of that person and what life they lived, but in the society in which they were situated in. Great, welcome back. So while Sam was entertaining you with that behind the scenes look, she was also counting up your pledges for this evening. So Tam, Sam, how do we do? Did we hit our goal for the night? Yes, we did. Great, so we've raised over $25,000, uh, which enables us to do this over half million dollar window restoration project. And uh, I really, from the bottom of my heart, I'd like to thank you for your generosity. And um, the next thing I'm going to introduce is a little treat. Uh, a few months ago, Kathy Sheehan, our historian, had an opportunity to do an interview with Bob Shaw, who was the uh, production. production designer for The Gilded Age when they were here, when HBO was here shooting The Gilded Age in Troy. And so without further ado, here's an excerpt from the interview, which you can see the full interview if you go to our YouTube channel uh, on YouTube. Two-time Emmy and Oscar 
nominated production designer, Bob Shaw. We are thrilled beyond belief that you all were here to film The Gilded Age. And we're wondering why Troy? What, what, was, what was about Troy that made you decide to come here? Uh, with Troy, it's the, the, the biggest selection of houses of the period that we really uh, needed to feature. Um, Washington Square from the 1830s, 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. In New York, there are very, very few examples of architecture, certainly domestic architecture, that are prior to the 1890s. And here, it's just like a field day. Um, you can go up and down so many streets and look in all directions and, and see all the houses that are, that are correct for us. And I always say that in New York, I, I can give them like the Beverly Hillbillies where they can look at the building and they can't look to one side or the other side and they can't look across the street. Okay. And um, here, you can walk for blocks. And uh, it's, it's an amazing uh, example of, of, of the architecture of the time. I don't think there's anything else like it on the East Coast that I'm aware of. Wow. That's You're probably funny. aware if there is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think one of the things, of course, we always talk about preservation mm -hmm. of the architecture. And of course, this is one good reason to mm -hmm. um, have this. But certainly, I think when you look at our unique buildings and, and the streetscape um, that we have, did it, it made it easier to film it? Was it easier for you to really um, imagine the, 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 the structure of the movie? Um, with with this location it, in mind? It made it much easier because just today we filmed a scene on this block and they were able to put the camera at one end and shoot all the way to the other end of the block and have characters walk walk down the street and then sometimes they'll, they'll be looking at them against one building and then sometimes they'll look in another direction and every direction we looked was, was good. And, and we can't find that in New York City. Wasn't that great listening to Bob Shaw and Kathy Sheehan talking about the filming of the Gilded Age? Um, it was such a pleasure to have them at the museum and taking over downtown trade, turning it into that wonderful um, film set for the Gilded Age. The Hart Cluett Museum is blessed to have Kathy Sheehan and a wonderful team of staff, including our curator, Stacy Draper, who's been with us for 43 years collecting artifacts, um, exploring the history of this area, um, doing research for hour after hour after hour. And um, sadly, I'm announcing, or happily, it depends on how you look at it, that she is retiring at the end of this year. Um, so we've been really, really fortunate to have her with us all of this time. She is really talented professional and really well respected all throughout the museum community. So I'd like to announce that we are going to be holding a retirement party for her um, online on June or J June on January 20th. Um, so mark your calendars now. We're still working on the details and we are planning to endow a uh, curator position um, to, in honor of her and also Doug Booker, who has contributed so much to the museum over the years. Um, so now I'd like to thank our corporate sponsors. We've been blessed to have a great deal of support from the corporate community, and that includes Berkshire Bank, Boucher Financial Group, Capital Region Living Magazine, Chet and Karen Alpaca, Khalil Jamison Group, Architecture Plus, Kanan, Heyman, and Weiss, the Colony uh, Mechanical Contractors, who spend a lot of time here at the museum fixing our HVAC system, um, 518 Craft Brewing, All Star Wine and Spirits, Massive Mesh, McLaren Engineering, Lori Schindler Team at Howard Hanna, Russell Sage College, and Rare Form Brewing. Um, now I'd like to introduce uh, Mark Shipley, our board president. So uh, before we close out tonight, there's just a, a, another group of people I think it's really important to uh, acknowledge. Uh, first, the honorary committee, um, the people from the community who bought tickets to this event to help us raise an awful lot of money for this organization. It's our largest fundraising event of the year. Um, and also the planning committee, which is uh, the people who put this event on tonight. The chair is Jody Brooks, uh, and the committee included Phyllis Conroy, Michael Nofel, Pat O'Brien, Star D'Angelo, Sam Mahosky, Kathleen Prue, 
Christine Ward, Fiona Kelly, um, and myself. So thank you all for coming. Thanks for helping us raise so much money in such a short period of time. And uh, we hope to see you at the Hart Kluwet Museum soon. Good night. Drive safely. <laughs>